This is a reading of Nicomachean Ethics by Aristotle. Nicomachean Ethics, Book 8, Chapter 1 It would follow after these things to go through what concerns friendship, since it is a certain kind of virtue, or goes with virtue, and is also most necessary for life. For no one would choose to live without friends, despite having all the rest of the good things, since for rich people and those who rule and have power, there seems to be the greatest need for friends. For what benefit would there be from such abundance if one were deprived of the opportunity to do favors, which arises most of all and in the most praiseworthy way toward friends? And how could it be watched over and kept safe without friends? For the greater it is, the shakier its foundation is. And in both poverty and other misfortunes, people believe that friends are the only refuge. And they believe that friends are helping to the young for avoiding error, and to the old for caring for them, and for action in which they fall short on account of weakness and to those at the peak for beautiful actions when two go together, since they are more capable of thinking and acting. And friendship seems to be present by nature, in a parent for a child, and in a child for a parent, not only in human beings but also in birds and most animals, and for animals alike in kind toward one another and especially among human beings, which is why we praise those who are friends to humanity. And one might see among those who travel that every human being is a kin and a friend to a human being. And friendship seems to hold cities together, and lawmakers seem to take it more seriously than justice. For like-mindedness seems to be something similar to friendship, and they aim at this most of all and banish faction most of all for being hostile to it. And when people are friends, there is no need of justice, but when they are just, there is still need of friendship. And among things that are just, what inclines toward friendship seems to be most just of all. And friendship is not only necessary, but also beautiful, for we praise those who love their friends, and an abundance of friends seems to be one of the beautiful things. Moreover, people believe that it is the same people who are good men and friends. But there is dispute about it on no small matters, for some people set it down that it is a certain kind of likeness and that those who are alike are friends. Hence people say, like to like, and birds to a feather, and that sort of a thing. Others, on the contrary, say that all such people are plotters in relation to each other, and they look for a higher and more natural reason for these same things. Euripidus says, Earth is in love with rain, when it is dried out, and solemn heaven filled with rain loves to fall to earth. And Heraclitus, that what is opposed holds together, and the most beautiful harmony comes from things that pull apart, and all things come about by strife. While others, including Empedocles, are on the opposite side, for he says that like seeks its like. But let those things in the impasses that have to do with nature be set aside, since they are not at home in the present inquiry. And let us examine all those that have to do with human things, and pertain to character and feelings, such as whether friendship comes about in all people, or whether it is impossible for people who are vicious to be friends, and whether there is one or more than one species of friendship. For those who believe that it is one, because it admits of more and less, are convinced by an indication 
that is not sufficient since even things uh, that differ in species are capable of being related as more and less but this has been discussed before chapter 2 perhaps the things that have to do with this might become clear if what is lovable is discerned for it seems that not everything is loved but only what is lovable and that this is what is good or pleasant or useful and what is useful would seem to be that by means of which something good or a pleasure comes about so that the good and the pleasant would be the things loved as ends but do people love the good or what is good for themselves for sometimes they are discordant and it is similar with what is pleasant and it seems that each person loves what is good for himself and that while the good is lovable simply the good for each is lovable to each and each person loves not what is good for himself but what appears to be but this will make no difference since it will be what appears lovable but while there are three things on account of which people love it is not friendship that is meant in the case of loving inanimate things since there is no loving in return or wishing for the good of that thing for it would no doubt be ridiculous to wish for good things for wine but if one wishes anything it is that it be preserved in order that one may have it but people say that one ought to wish for good things for a friend for his own sake however they call people good-willed who wish for good things in that way when the same thing does not come from the other person since they speak of goodwill in people who reciprocate it as being friendship or must one add when they are not unaware of it for many people are good-willed toward those they have not seen but believed to be decent or useful and one of the latter might feel this same way toward the former these people then are obviously good-willed to one another but how could one say they were friends when they are unaware of, of how they stand toward each other therefore it is necessary to have good-will and wish for good things for one another not being unaware of it on account of some of the reasons mentioned chapter 3 but these reasons differ from one another in species and therefore the kinds of loving and the kinds of friendship do too so there are three species of friendship equal in number to the kinds of things that are loved for in accordance with each there is a reciprocal loving which one is not unaware of and those who love one another wish for good things for one another in the same sense in which they love so those who love one another for what is useful do not love one another for themselves but in so far as something good comes to them from one another and it is similar with those who love on account of pleasure since they are fond of charming people not for being people of a certain sort but because they are pleasing to themselves so those who love for what is useful have a liking based on what is good for themselves and those who love for pleasure have a liking based on what is pleasant to themselves and the other person is loved not for what he is but in so far as he is useful or pleasant therefore these are friendships of an incidental kind since it is not in so far as the one loved is the very person he is that he is loved but in so far as he provides in the one case something good or in the other case pleasure hence such friendships are easily dissolved when the people themselves do not stay the way they were for when the others are no longer pleasant or useful they stop loving them and what is useful does not stay the same but becomes something different at a different time so when that through which they were friends has departed the friendship is dissolved since the friendship was a consequence of that the sort of friendship that is for the useful seems to come about especially in the old for those who are at such a time of life pursue not what is pleasant but what is beneficial 
and in as many of those at their peak and of the young as pursue what is advantageous. Such people are not likely to live together with one another, for sometimes they are not even pleasant to one another, so they have no additional need of such an association when the other person is not beneficial, since the other person is pleasant just so far as they have hopes of something good from him. And it is among these friendships that people place those with foreign guests. But the friendship of the young seems to be based on pleasure, since they live in accord with feeling, and pursue especially what is pleasant to themselves, and present at hand. But when the time of life falls differently, the pleasures do become different, hence they quickly become friends and quickly stop, since the friendship changes at the same time as what is pleasant, and the turnover of this sort of pleasure is rapid. The young are also lustful, since the greater part of sexual love results from passion and is based on pleasure. This is why they love and stop loving quickly, often changing within the same day. And the young do wish to pass the time together and to live with one another, since what they get out of friendship comes about in that way. But the complete sort of friendship is that between people who are good and are alike in virtue, since they wish for good things for one another, in the same way in so far as they are good, and they are good in themselves. And those who wish for good things for their friends, for their own sake are friends most of all, since they are that way for themselves, and not incidentally. So the friendship of these people lasts as long as they are good, and virtue is enduring. And each of them is good simply and good for his friend, since good people are both good simply and beneficial to one another, and they are similarly pleasant, since the good are pleasant both simply and to one another, for to each person actions that are his own, and such as his own are similarly to his pleasure while the actions of the good are the same or similar. And it is reasonable that such friendship is lasting. For all those things that ought to belong to friends are joined together in it. For every friendship is for something good or for pleasure, either simply or for the one who loves and is from some sort of similarity. And in this sort all the things mentioned are present on account of themselves since in this sort the people are alike, and all the rest of it, and what is good simply is also pleasant simply, and these things most of all are loved, and so the loving and the friendship among these people is the most intense and best, but such friendships are likely to be rare, for such people are few, also there is an additional need of time and intimate acquaintance, for according to the common saying, it is not possible for people to know one another until they use up the proverbial amount of salt together, and so it is not possible for them to accept one another before that, or to be friends until each shows himself to each as lovable and is trusted. Those who quickly make gestures of friendship toward one another want to be friends but are not unless they are also lovable and know this, since wishing for friendship comes about as something quick, but friendship does not. Chapter 4 This sort of friendship, then, is complete both in time and in the other respects, and in all of them, the same or similar things come to each person from the other, which is just what ought to belong to friends. And friendship on account of what is pleasant has a resemblance to this sort, since the good are also pleasant to one another, and it is similar with friendship on account of what is useful, since the good are that way to one another also. And the friendships between those who seek pleasure or use 
are most enduring when the same thing comes to them from one another, such as pleasure, and not only that, but also from the same thing, such as between charming people and not as with a lover and a beloved. For the latter do not take pleasure in the same things, but the lover in looking at the beloved, and the beloved in being paid attention to by the lover. And sometimes, when the bloom of your youth fades, the friendship cools, since to the one the sight is not pleasing, and to the other the attentiveness is not forthcoming. On the other hand, many lovers remain friends if, as a result of their intimacy, they become fond of each other's characters when these are alike. But people who are involved in sexual relations, not in exchange for something pleasant, but for something useful, are friends less fully and remain so less. Those who are friends on account of something useful break up at the same time the advantage comes to an end, since they were friends not of one another, but of what they got out of one another. So it is possible, even for base sorts of people, to be friends to one another for pleasure or for use, and for decent people to be friends to base ones, and for people who are neither one nor the other to be friends to any sort whatsoever. But it is clear that only the good can be friends for themselves, since the bad do not enjoy their own kind unless some benefit comes from them, and only the friendship of the good is resistant to slander, since it is not easy to be persuaded by anyone about someone whose character has been proved by oneself over a long time. Between these people, there is a trusting and a never doing each other wrong and everything else people consider worthy of friendship in its true sense. But in the other friendships, nothing prevents such trouble from being stirred up. Since people use the word friends for those who are allied on account of what is useful, just as with cities, for alliances between cities seem to come about for the sake of advantage, and for those who are fond of one another on account of pleasure, just as with children. Perhaps it is necessary that we do call such people friends, but say there is more than one species of friendship, and that, while friendship in the primary and governing sense is between the good in so far as they are good. The remaining kinds are friendships only by a likeness, since the people are friends only in that respect in which there is something good and some likeness in them. For even the pleasant is good for people devoted to pleasure. But these other kinds are not very apt to be joined together, and the same people do not become friends on account of use as on account of pleasure, since, on the whole, incidental things are not linked up. And since friendship is divided into these species, people of a low sort will be friends for pleasure or use, since they are alike in that respect, while the good will be friends for themselves, since they are friends in so far as they are good. The latter, then, are friends simply, but the former are friends incidentally and by resembling the latter. Chapter 5 And just as in the case of virtues, people are called good either with respect to an active condition or with respect to being at work, so too is it with friendship. For those who live together take pleasure in one another and provide good things for one another, while others 
when sleeping or when in separate places, are not at work at it, but still are in such a condition as to be at work in the manner of friends. For places do not dissolve friendship as such, but only the being at work of it. But if the absence becomes long lasting, it seems to cause forgetfulness of the friendship, which is why it is said that lack of communications breaks up many friendships. And neither old people nor those with sour dispositions appear to be friendly, since the extent of pleasure is small in them, and no one is able to spend much time with what is painful or not pleasing. For nature appears to avoid what is painful most of all, and to aim at what is pleasant. But those who approve of one another, but do not live together, seems to be good-willed rather than friends, since nothing is so characteristic of friends as living together, for those in need crave benefits, while those who are blessed crave daily companionship, since it belongs to them least of all to be solitary. But it is impossible for people to spend time together who are not pleasing to one another or who do not enjoy the same things, which is what a fraternal association seems to involve. Friendship, then, belongs most of all to good people. As has been said repeatedly, for it seems that what is lovable and preferable is what is simply good or pleasant, while what is loved and preferred by each person is what is good or pleasing to that person, and to a good person, a good person is that way on both counts. Affection seems like a feeling, but friendship seems like an active condition, for affection is no less present for inanimate things, but loving in return involves choice, and choice comes from an active condition and people wish for good things for those they love, for those others' own sake, not as a result of feeling, but as a result of an active condition. But by loving the friend, they love what is good for themselves, for when a good person becomes a friend, he becomes good for the one to whom he is a friend. So each of them loves what is good for himself, and also gives back an equal amount in return in wishing as well as in what is pleasant. For it is said that friendship is equal relationship, and this belongs most of all to the friendship of the good. Chapter 6 Friendship arises less among people of sour disposition and among those who are older, to the extent that they are harder to get along with and take less pleasure in company, since these things seem to pertain most to friends and to be most conducive to friendship. Hence, while the young become friends quickly, the old do not, since people do not become friends with those whom they do not enjoy, and it is similar with those of a sour disposition. Such people are still good-willed to one another, since they wish for good things and present themselves on occasions of need. But they are not quite friends on account of not spending the days together or enjoying one another, which seem to be the things most characteristic of friends. To be a friend to many people in the complete kind of friendship is not possible just as it is impossible to be in love with many people at the same time, for this seems like an extreme condition of such a nature as to come about toward one person, and for the same person to find many people greatly pleasing at the same time is not easy, and it is perhaps not easy even for there to be many good people to be pleased by. And it is necessary to get experience and to come into intimate acquaintance with each other 
which is of the utmost difficulty. But it is possible to be pleased by many people for usefulness and pleasure, since there are many people of those sorts, and their services are provided in a short time. Of these sorts, the one that is for pleasure seems more like friendship, whenever the same things come from both people, and they enjoy one another or enjoy the same things, which is a sort of friendship that belongs to the young. Since there is more generosity in these, while friendship for use is characteristic of vulgarly commercial people. And while those who are blessed have no need of useful people, they do need pleasant ones, since they want to live together with some people. And while people put up with what is painful for a short time, no one would continually endure it, not even the good itself if it were painful to him. That is why they look for pleasant friends. Perhaps they ought to look for such people as are also good, and furthermore good for themselves, since in that way they would have all the things that are required in friends. But those who are in positions of power seem to make use of friends whom they keep divided, since some people are useful to them and others are pleasant, but not very often are the same people both. For they are not looking for people who are pleasant because of virtue, or for people who are useful for beautiful deeds, but for charming people when they are aiming at pleasure, and for the clever people to do what they order, and these attributes do not very often occur in the same people. It has been said that a person of serious stature is pleasing and useful at the same time, but such a person does not become a friend to a superior unless he is also superior in virtue. Otherwise, he cannot make things equal by being proportionally excelled. But it is hardly customary for such people to turn up in positions of power. Now, the friendships that have been discussed consist in an equality, since the same things come from both people and they wish for the same things for one another, or they exchange one thing for another such as pleasure for benefit. And it was said that the latter sort are friendships to a lesser degree and are less enduring. They even seem on account of likeness and unlikeness to the same thing, both to be and not to be friendships, for they appear to be friendships by likeness to that which comes from virtue, since the one involves something pleasant and the other involves something useful, and these belong to that also. But in that friendship that comes from virtue is resistant to slander and lasting. While these equally change and differ in many other ways, they seem not to be friendships, but their unlikeness to that. Chapter 7 but there is a different form of friendship that goes along with superiority, as of a father for a son, or generally of an older person for a younger, as well as of a husband for a wife, or of any ruler for one who is ruled. And these also differ from one another, since the friendship of parents for children is not the same as that of rulers for those who are ruled, nor that of a father for a son as that of a son for a father, nor that of a husband for a wife, as that of a wife for a husband. For a different virtue and a different work belongs to each of these, and the things on account of which they love are also different. So their affections and friendships are different too. And so the same things do not come to each person from the other nor should they look for the same things. But whenever children give parents what one ought to give those who have brought one into being, 
and parents give children what one ought to give one's offspring, the friendship of that sort of people will be lasting and decent. And in all the friendships that go along with superiority, the affection also ought to become proportional, that is, the better one or the one conferring a greater benefit ought to be loved more than he loves, and similarly in each of the other cases. For whenever the affection comes to be in accord with what is deserved, there comes to be a certain kind of equality, which seems to belong to friendship. But what is equal in matters of justice does not seem to work the same way as what is equal in friendship. For in matters of justice, the equal is primarily what is in accord with what is deserved, and secondarily, what is equal in amount. But in friendship, it is primarily in accord with amount, and secondarily, in accord with what is deserved. And this is clear if the divergence becomes great in virtue, or in vice, or in affluence, or in anything else. For no longer are they friends, nor do they think they deserve to be. This is most manifest in the case of the gods, since they have the greatest superiority in all good things. But it is evident also in the case of kings since those who are far inferior do not even think they deserve to be friends with them, nor do those who are worth nothing think they deserve to be friends with those who are best or wisest. In such cases there is no precise boundary up to which they are friends, for when many things have been taken away the friendship still remains. But when they are separated greatly as from a god, it no longer does. From this an impasse is raised, that perhaps friends do not wish for the greatest of goods for their friends, such as that they be gods. For then they would no longer have friends, and so there would be good things they do not have, since friends are good things. So it was beautifully said that a friend wishes for good things for a friend, for that friend's own sake that friend would need to remain whatever he is. Thus one would wish for the greatest goods for someone who is still a human being. And perhaps not for all of these, since each person wishes for good things, most of all for himself. Chapter 8 Most people seem, on account of a passion for honour, to want to be loved more than to love. Hence most people are fond of flatterers, since a flatterer is a friend who is an interior position, or pretends to be that way, and to love more than he is loved. But being loved seems close to being honoured, which most people aim at. But they do not appear to prefer honour for its own sake, but as something incidental, since most people delight in being honoured by those in positions of power, on account of hope, for they believe they will get something from these people if they lack anything, and delight in their honour as a sign that they will be well off. But those who crave honour from decent people, who know them, aim to confirm their own opinion about themselves. So they delight in honour, trusting in the judgment of those who say that they are good. Being loved, however, people enjoy for its own sake, and for this reason it would seem that it is something better than being honoured, and that friendship is choice-worthy for its own sake. But friendship seems to be present in loving more than in being loved. A sign of this is that mothers delight in loving. For some of them give up their own children to be brought up and feel love just in knowing them. Not seeking to be loved in return if both are not possible. It seems to be sufficient for them 
if they see their children doing well and they love them even if the children in their ignorance give back nothing of what is due to a mother and since friendship is present more in loving and those who love their friends are praised the virtue belonging to friends seems to be loving so that those between whom this takes place in accord with worth are lasting friends and their friendship is lasting and it is especially in this way that those who are unequal might be friends since it would equalize them equality or similarity is friendship and especially the similarity that comes from virtue since such people are constant in themselves and stay constant toward one another they have no use for anything base and do not lend assistance to such things and they even in a manner of speaking prevent them since it does not belong to the good either to go astray themselves or to permit their friends to do so but wise ridden people have nothing stable about them since they do not even remain similar to themselves though they become friends for a short time while they take pleasure in one another's vices useful or pleasant people stay friends together for as long as they provide pleasures or benefits to one another and friendship for use seems to come about most of all between opposites such as in someone poor for someone rich or in someone ignorant for someone with knowledge since the one will give something else in return aiming at that which he happens to lack one might pull a lover and beloved or a beautiful and ugly person over into this group and this is why lovers sometimes appear ridiculous believing themselves worthy of being loved in the way they love those who are similarly lovable ought perhaps to believe that but those who have nothing of the sort about them are comical but perhaps one opposite does not desire the other for its own sake but only incidental and the appetite is for the mean that is what is good for instance for something dry not to become wet but to reach the mean and similarly with something hot and with other things but let these things be set aside since they are too far outside the subject chapter 9 now it seems as was said at the beginning that friendship and justice concern the same things and are present in the same things for in every sort of community there seems to be something just and also friendship at any rate people address their shipmates and fellow soldiers as friends and it is similar with those in other sorts of communities to whatever extent that they share something in common to that extent is there a friendship since that too is the extent to which there is something just and the proverb the things of all friends are common is right since friendship consists in community all things are common to brothers and comrades but certain definite things to other friends more to some and less to others since among the friendships too some are friendships to a greater degree and others to a lesser and the things that are just also vary for they are not the same for parents toward children as for brothers toward one another nor are they the same for comrades as for fellow citizens similarly in other sorts of friendship so the things that are unjust are also different for each of these and get increased by being related to those who are more fully friends for example it is more terrible to cheat a comrade out of money than a fellow citizen or to refrain from helping a brother rather than a stranger 
or to hit a father rather than anyone else. And it is natural for what is just to increase along with friendship, since they are present in the same things and have an equal extent. But all communities are like parts of the political community, for people come together for some advantage and to provide for something that contributes to life. And the political community seems to gather together from the beginning and to remain together for the sake of what is advantageous. The lawmakers aim at this, and people call the common advantage just. So the other communities aim at what is advantageous in a partial way. For example, sailors aim at what results from a voyage for making money, or something of that sort, and fellow soldiers aim at what results from warfare, grasping at money or victory or a city and similarly with those who belong to a tribe or a district. But some communities or people who celebrate festivals or subscribe to dining clubs seem to come about for pleasure, since they are for the sake of sacrifices or parties. But all of these appear to be under the political community, since the political community aims not at present advantage, but one that extends to all of life. But those who make sacrifices on congregations for these do so both to pay honor to the gods and to provide themselves with relaxations that involve pleasure. For the ancient sacrifices and congregations seem to have come about after the gathering of crops. As for the first fruits, since it was especially on these occasions that they had leisure. So all communities seem to be parts of the political community and friendships of such kinds will go along with communities of such kinds. Chapter 10 And there are three forms of constitutions and also an equal number of deviations as corruptions of these. The constitutions are kingship and aristocracy and a third kind based on property assessments, which it seems appropriate to call democratic, though most people are accustomed to call it constitutional rule. Kingship is the best of these, and timocracy the worst. The deviation from kingship is tyranny, since both are monarchies, but they differ to the greatest extent, since a tyrant looks to his own advantage while a king looks to that of those who are ruled. For someone who is not self-sufficient and superior in all goods is not a king, and such a person has no need of anything in addition, so he would look to things beneficial not to himself, but those who are ruled. One who is not of this sort would be a sort of king chosen by lot. Tyranny is opposite to this since the tyrant pursues what is good for himself, and it is more apparent in this case that it is the worst, the opposite of the best is the worst. The change from kingship is into tyranny, since tyranny is baseness of a monarchy, and a vicious king becomes a tyrant. The change from aristocracy is into oligarchy, by vice in the rulers who distribute the things that belong to the city contrary to what is deserved, and all or most of its goods to themselves, and the ruling offices always to the same people, making being rich count for most, so few people rule, and bad ones instead of the most decent. The change from timocracy is into democracy, since they have a common boundary, for timocracy is meant to be rule of a multitude of people, and all those within the property qualification are equal. The least bad of these is democracy, since it deviates to a small extent from the form of constitutional rule. Constitutions, then, most often change in this way, since this is a way to change the smallest amount and the most easily one may find likeness of them and patterns of a sort in households. 
For the relationship of a father to sons has the shape of a kingship, since the father's care is for his children, hence Homer's Zeus is addressed as father, for kingship is meant to be fatherly rule. Among the Persians, the rule of the father is tyrannical, since they treat the sons as slaves. The rule of a master over slaves is also tyrannical, since it is the advantage of the master that is active in it. But while this seems right, the Persian way is clearly wrong, for rule over different people is of a different kind. The relationship of a husband to a wife seem aristocratic, since the man rules as a result of worthiness, and over those things which a man ought to rule. As many things as are suited to a woman, he turns over to her. If the husband is in charge of everything, he changes the relationship into an oligarchy, since he does it contrary to worthiness, and not in so far as he is best suited. Sometimes wives rule when they are heiresses, but their rule does not come from virtue, but from wealth and power, just as in oligarchies. The relationship of brothers seems democratic, for they are equal, except to the extent that they differ in age. For this reason, when they differ greatly in age, their friendship is no longer of a brotherly sort. And democracy is present most of all in household without masters, since there everyone is equal, and in those in which the one who rules is weak, and there is license for everyone. Chapter 11 In each form of constitution, friendship shows itself, to the extent that justice does. In a king toward his subjects, this is present in a superiority in conferring benefits, since he does good for those over whom he is king, if he is good and pays attention to them, in order for them to do well, like a herdsman with sleep. Hence Homer calls Agamemnon the shepherd of the people. Fatherly friendship is also of this sort, but differs in the magnitude of the benefits done, since he is responsible for one's being, which seems greatest, as well as for nurture and education. And these things are also attributed to one's forefathers and a father is by nature suited to rule sons, and forefathers their descendants, and a king his subjects. These friendships consist in superiority, which is why parents are also honoured. So what is just among these people is not the same, but is in accord with worth, and so too is the friendship. The friendship of a husband for a wife is the same as in an aristocracy, since it is in accord with virtue, with the greater good going to the better person, and what is fitting going to each, and so too with what is just. The friendship of brothers is like that in a fraternal association, since they are equal and of similar age, and such people are, for the most part, alike in feelings and in character. The friendship that results from a democratic rule seems like this, since the citizens are meant to be equal and to be decent, so that the ruling is done in parts and equally, and so the friendship is that way too. In the deviant constitutions, in the same way that what is just is of small extent, so too is the friendship, and it is least in the worst since in a tyranny there is little or no friendship. For in those situations in which there is nothing shared by the ruler and the ruled, there is no friendship, since there is no justice either, as in a craftsman in relation to a tool, or in a soul in relation to a body, or in a master in relation to a slave. While all these things are held by those who use them, there is no friendship toward things without souls, nor anything just, and neither is there toward a horse or a cow, 
nor toward a slave as a slave. For there is nothing in common, since a slave is an unsold tool, as a tool is a soulless slave. In so far then as he is a slave, there is no friendship toward him, though there is in so far as he is a human being. For there seems to be something just for every human being toward all those who are capable of sharing in law and contractual agreement. And so there is friendship too, to the extent he is a human being. So friendships and justice are of small extent in tyrannies, but in democracies they are of greater extent, since many things are common to people who are equal. Chapter 12 Every sort of friendship, then, is in a community, as was said though one might separate out that of relatives or in a fraternal association. But those of fellow citizens, or tribesmen, or shipmates, and all those of that sort, seem more like communities, since they seem as if they result from a certain kind of agreement, and one might rank a friendship with a foreign guest among these. Friendship between relatives seems to be of many forms, but they are all derived from the paternal kind, for parents love their children as being something that is part of themselves, and children love their parents as being something from which they come. But parents know what comes from them more than their offspring know what they are from these parents, and the source feels what it begets as its own more than the offspring feels the one who produces it. For what comes from itself is a source's own, as is a tooth or hair or anything else to the one who has it. But to that, its source is nothing of its own, or only less so. And parents love more in length of time, since they love their children as soon as they come into being but children love their parents after some time has gone by, when they get understanding or perception. And from these things it is clear why mothers have greater love. Parents then love children as themselves, for things that come from themselves by being separated are a sort of other selves, while children love their parents as being by nature from them and brothers love one another by being by nature from the same parents, since their sameness with them produces a sameness with one another, for which reason people seek of the same blood or root and such. So they are in a certain way the same, in separate selves, and common upbringing and what goes with similarity of age contribute a great amount to friendship, since it is age mate with age mate. And those who are alike in character are comrades, which is why brotherly friendship resembles that of a fraternal association. Cousins and other relatives are bound together from these causes, since it results from their being descended from the same people. Some are more kin, others more alien, according as the original ancestor is near or far. And there is a friendship in children for their parents, as in human beings for gods, for something good and superior, since parents have done the greatest good for them. For they are responsible for their being and being raised, and for the being educated of those who become so. And such a friendship has more that is pleasant and useful in it than one between unrelated people to the extent that life is shared more in common between them, and they are present in brotherly friendship, the same things as in a fraternal association, and more so among decent people, and generally in those who are alike, to the extent that they are more kin and have already loved one another from birth, and to the extent that those who are from the same parents and raised and educated alike are more alike in character, and their testing over time is the most thorough and most certain.
the things conducive to friendship are in proportion in the other relatives. The friendship of a husband and a wife seems to be present by nature, since a human being is by nature disposed to pair off even more than to form a political association, to the extent that a household is prior to and more necessary than a city, and the production of offspring is more common among animals. Among the other animals, then, the community goes that far. But human beings dwell together not only for the sake of producing offspring, but also for the things that go into life, since the work is divided from the start, and is different for a man and for a woman, so that they help one another by placing each own work into the common supply. For these reasons, there seems to be both use and pleasure in this friendship, and it would be a friendship for virtue as well. If the people are decent, for there is a virtue belonging to each, and each would take delight in such a mate. And children seem to be a bond, which is why couples without children break up more quickly, since children are a good shade by both, and what a shade holds things together. How a husband ought to conduct his life in relation to his wife, and in general a friend in relation to a friend, seems to be no different a thing to look for from how it is just since what is just does not seem to be the same for a friend in relation to a friend as in relation to a stranger or a comrade or someone he goes to school with. Chapter 13 Since there are three kinds of friendship, as was said at the start, and each kind there are some who are friends in equality and others in accord with superiority, since people who are similarly good become friends, or a better person with a worse, and likewise with people who are pleasant or who are friends for use, who are equal or differ in their benefits. The one who are equal ought, in accord with their equality, to be equal in loving and all the rest, while those who are unequal ought to give what is proportional to the superiority. And complaints and reproaches arise only, or most of all, in friendship for use, as is reasonable. For those who are friends on account of virtue are eager to do good to one another, since this belongs to virtue and to friendship, and since they are in competition in this way, there are no complaints or fights, for no one scorns someone who loves him and does good for him, but if he is gracious, defends himself by doing good. And the one who outdoes the other in this would not complain to his friend, since he hits what he aims at, for each of them is stretching out towards something good. Nor does this happen very much between those who are friends for pleasure, since what they desire comes to both at the same time if they enjoy passing the time together. It would obviously be ridiculous for one of them to complain that the other doesn't please them, when he has it in his power not to spend his days with him. But friendship for use is full of complaints, since people who use one another for their benefit always want something more, and believe they have less than what is due, and make the reproach that the amount they get is not as much as they want, even though they are entitled to it. Those who do the favors are not capable of supplying all the things the ones who get them want. And it seems that, in the same way, what is just has two sides, one unwritten and the other according to law. There are also two sides to friendship for use, one having to do with character, the other legalistic. Complaints arise then, most of all when people break up the friendship on grounds that are not the same as those on which they entered into association. The legalistic kind rest on stated conditions either of a completely commercial sort from handing over to handing back, or more generous about time, but similarly commercial about what is for what. In the latter sort, the benefit is clear and undisputed, but the postponement has something friendly about it, which is why in some places there can be no lawsuits for these situations. But they believe that one must put up with the people one has agreed to associate with on trust. The kind that has to do with character is not on stated conditions, but as one gives to, or does anything else whatever 
for a friend, but the giver considers that he deserves to get back something equal or greater, as though he had not given something but lent it, and he will complain if the way he began the association is not the same as the way it was dissolved. This happens because all of most people want what is beautiful but choose what is beneficial, and while it is a beautiful thing to do good not in order to be repaid in kind, it is beneficial to have something good done for one. So one who can ought to give back in return the value of what he received and willingly and what he would have agreed to give back if he could have. For one ought not to make someone a friend who is unwilling. So when one has made a mistake in the beginning and accepted a favor from someone from whom he ought not have, since it was not from a friend or from someone doing it for its own sake, one ought to break off the relationship just as one who has received a benefit on stated conditions. If he cannot do so, not even the giver would have considered it his due. So it is possible something ought to be given back. But one ought to consider at the beginning from whom one is accepting the favor and on what conditions, in order that one might submit to those conditions or not. But it is a matter of dispute whether one ought to measure the favor by the benefits to the one who receives it and make the return according to that, or by the service of the one who does it. Those who receive favors say they got from their benefactors the sorts of things that were small to them, and that it was possible to get from others, making them seem little, while back the other way. The others say, they were the greatest things they had, which could not have come from anyone else, and which were given at a time of danger or some such need. But since it is a friendship for use, is a measure than the benefit to the one who gets it. For he is the one in need, and the other person supplies that need as a way to get back something equal to it. So the sort of aid that comes is the amount by which the former is benefited. And so he ought to give back as much as was gained by him, or even more, since that is a more beautiful thing. But in friendships, based on virtue, there are no complaints, and the choice of the one who does the favor seems to be the measure, since what governs virtue and character is in the choice. Chapter 14 There are also differences in friendships that involve superiority, since each person believes he deserves to have more. But when this happens, the friendship is dissolved. For the better one thinks it appropriate for him to have more, since more is bestowed upon the good, and it is similar with someone who confers greater benefits. For these people say that someone who is not useful ought not to have an equal amount, since it becomes a charity and not a friendship if the things one gets from the friendship are not going to be in accord with the worth of the work put in. For they assume that, just as, in a partnership for money, those who put in more get more, so too ought it to be in friendship. But with the one in need, or the inferior one, it is the other way around. They take it to belong to a good friend to provide for those in need. For what, they ask, is the benefit of being a friend to a person of serious worth or power if one is not going to enjoy anything out of it? Now it seems that each side is right in what it considers appropriate and that one ought to distribute more out of the friendship to each person, though not more of the same thing, but to the superior more honor and to the one in need more gain, since honor is a reward of virtue and of doing good for others, but gain is what is helpful for need. And this is the way it seems to be in political constitutions, since the one who provides nothing good to the common supply is not honored, for what is held in common is given to the one who benefits the common good, and honor is something held in common. For it is not possible at the same time to be given money out of the common supply and to be honored. 
for no one puts up with a lesser share in everything. So people allot honor to the one who is diminished in money, and money to the one who takes bribes. For what is in accord with what equalizes and preserves friendship, as was said. So this is the way one ought to associate with unequals. The one who is given the benefit of money or virtue ought to give honor in return, giving back what he is capable of giving. For friendship seeks after what is possible, not what is deserved, since there is not even any such thing in all cases, as in the honors given to the gods and to parents. No one could ever give back what they deserve, and one who does them honor as far as possible seems to be a decent person. This is why it would not seem to be permissible for a son to renounce a father, but is permissible for a father to renounce a son. For one ought to repay someone who has benefited him, but there is nothing a son can do that is worthy of the things that have been already done for him, so that he always owes a debt. But it is permissible for those to whom a debt is owed to release it, and so this is permitted to a father. At the same time, perhaps, it would seem that no one would ever cut off a son who did not go to extreme in viciousness, for apart from the love that is natural, it is not a human sort of thing to reject assistance. But for a son who is vicious, providing assistance would be something avoided or not eagerly sought, since most people want to be treated well, but avoid doing that to others as something unprofitable. About these things, then, let the discussion go this far. And of Book 8.